bordering contact force of an impact. Introduction to the concept of contact force. Contact force is useful in terms of making predictions of localized failure, like punching failure. If it is used to predict other behavior of the target, such as the deflections of the beam as shown on this slide, then the inertia force must also be included. Uh, this is why the uh, contact force must not be confused with cosine static force, which is used for making predictions of the deflections of the beam. This line presents the distinction between the two types of force, the contact force and the cosine static force. This line and the next line shows the effect of the stiffness of the impactor on the amplitude of the contact force. In other words, the contact force generated by the impact cannot be generalized by the amount of kinetic energy delivered by the impact. As the impactor becomes stiffer, harder, then the amount of contact force becomes higher for the same amount of kinetic energy delivered by the impact. Introduction to the modeling principles. The analytical solution presented in this lecture is based on a two degree of freedom system model. And that involves two lump mass which are connected by two springs. The frontal spring represents the behavior of contact between the impactor and the surface of the wall which is struck by the impactor. And the rear spring is simply representing the stiffness of the wall. The Hysteretic behavior of the frontal spring is based on the Hunt and Crossley model. Stiffness properties at contact, which is represented by the frontal spring of the two degree of freedom system model. I believe the contest stiffness at impact is best measured by testing a spherical specimen of the impactor. And, but this is often too expensive to prepare that spherical specimen. And the method presented in this lecture is based on testing corded samples of the impactor and in a way that if we test two cylinder at right angles we are effectively creating the same type of contact as the testing of a sphere this diagram presents the hysteric behavior of the cosine static test being applied to the cylinder test
it is really important to recognize that the boundary conditions of a cosine static test on the test rig is very different to that of an impact. Uh, this is why corrections has to be made. So the BF factor is a transformation of the slope of the loading curve to take into account of changes in the boundary conditions. So this is the boundary factor, BF. And another factor we need to take into account is the dynamic factor, DF, uh, which depends on the rate of low applications. A linear correlation has been developed by combining test results with that of numerical simulations. And the chart being shown enable us to read off the dynamic factor DF in order to make corrections to the slope of the force displacement relationship observed from cosine static testing. The contact stiffness parameter K subscript N for contact between fresh granite and a concrete surface has been correlated with the compression test velocity V0. The test results that have been presented in the earlier slides were based on a cylinder with diameter of 100 millimeters with other size of specimens and corrections would need to be made based on the relationship presented here. The exponent p is another parameter to be estimated from testing. Now, based on the fresh granite in contact with a concrete surface, we have also derived the correlation between p with the velocity of impact and also with the size, the diameter of the specimen. The coefficient of restitution is also to be modeled. The area enclosed by the loading and loading curve of the cosine static test is area A. Now this, the relationship shown on the right hand side of the slide enable us to make accurate estimate of the coefficient of restitution as functions of area A along with the value of P and K subscript N. For a 100 millimeter diameter specimen, the correlation between coefficient restitution and the impact velocity has been obtained and also been validated by experimental measurements. The correlating relationship presented in the previous slide was based on a 100 mm diameter specimen. In order to generalize the correlations, then the velocity is replaced by the kinetic energy of impact. In order that specimen of any diameter can be incorporated into the analysis. Once the parameter P, K subscript N, and coefficient of restitution has been obtained, then the parameter D subscript N forming part of the Hunt and Crossley expression can be found readily. Experimental verification. One type of impact test that have been conducted was that of a drop test involving dropping a machined rock impact specimen onto a concrete slab.
impact test involving the use of a gas gun to fire a strico specimen on a concrete specimen have also been conducted. It's shown on this slide that the forcing function of content as obtained by the two degree of freedom system models are in excellent agreement with both measurement from the impact test and also from finite element simulations. Work example involving the use of Excel spreadsheets to simulate the forcing function of contact is presented to illustrate the operation of the analytical model. The work example involves a boulder weighing 200 kg striking the surface of a concrete barrier at a velocity of 5.1 m per second. Hand calculation is first used to obtain the value of K subscript N, the value of P, and the value of coefficient of restitution. The following set of slides present the systematic development of an Excel spreadsheet from scratch, showing how to obtain the forcing functions of contact. Finally, the forcing function of contact based on the work example is presented. The concepts presented in these lectures has been accepted for publication by the International Journal of Impact Engineering.